going to be uh, a new way for us to kind of think about how we're doing our SEO and everything. One of the interesting things that I saw with it is really, you know, the core of just basic organic SEO is still an extremely important part of... Your volume's down, John. Turn your volume up on your headset. Okay. I'm working on that. Thanks uh, for letting us know that. So while uh, John, you know, y'all are gonna have to bear with us as we start this lunch bath because we're uh, playing around with it and getting used to it just like y'all are. So, uh, so please bear with us while we play with this. So Google's uh, rank brain, you know, Bernadette Coleman, and I'm not for sure if y'all know her or not. She's the uh, CEO of Advice Interactive Group. And she special, you know, her focus is local SEO. Actually, people know her online as the queen of local SEO. And so just earlier this week, she published about how artificial intelligence meets search. And so it's 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 really been interesting for me. And the thing that that I took away from uh, the article from from Bernadette's article was that, you know, we should have already been positioning our content um, so that um, Google would we would show up and you know through artificial intelligence. So for those of you that didn't read about what Rank Brain was, let me uh, tell you a little bit about it. And I'm actually going to put the link to it in the discussion so y'all can click on the link and if y'all want to multitask or, or read it later on. So Google, you know, they have their hummingback bird algorithm along with lots of other algorithms um, but hummingbird is what feeds search results and so the way hummingbird was created is so that it serves search results based off of keywords what people actually are putting in the little search box what they're looking for and so with that said um, so what the artificial intelligence part of it is is it actually goes out and when a user puts in their keyword search, um, whatever they're looking for, maybe it's uh, citation listings. I think about that because uh, that's something that I do with the branding team at Advice Interactive is we talk to people how to build their citations. So maybe somebody goes out and says, how do I build up my citations? Okay. So what the, what Rank Brain does is it looks at that and it says, okay, they are, they're really, they're typing in, how do I build my citations? But they, but they, what they really want to know is how do I clean up my citations? And I'm just using that as one example. So rank brain goes in based on the keywords the user puts in and based on their previous search history and what other people have been searching for. And it will go in and deliver what they think the results are in the search engine results pages. So that's the geeky explanation of it. John, you got your audio back so you can finish your discussion. Yeah, I'm over here playing with some other features that we're trying to uh, add some lower thirds in. So I'm trying to get that configured at the same time. But, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, clearly it, it's going to be a, a big thing for us in regards to SEO. So, uh, yeah, I'm not saying. That's it. That's all it said. That's, That's all you have to say. Stop multitasking over there, John. But we want all the tools in here. The toys in here, don't we? Okay, we can get the toys later. So, so the thing for me is it's all about content, and that's how Google um, Google is saying that um, we've they've been changing everything in their algorithm saying that you know you need to start putting your content it's about writing your questions and your answers in a way that people can really understand and it is about um, feeding people the content they actually want to find and so we've already been moving in this direction with our content <laughs> I see I see right here and uh, you know I always is it is it Ali am I saying it right is it Ali am I saying your name right all right, awesome. So Ali is uh, chatting here saying content equals king and, and queen, definitely. And you're absolutely rude to write, write about it because that's that's what it is. And if you've been putting your content in the right way and you've been writing things that people want to read and you haven't been doing keyword stuffing, then you are absolutely going to 
um, have people have your content found in search results. So this new rank brain thing is not going to affect you. However, if you've been doing things wrong, then it is going to affect you. And that's what Bernadette discusses in the article. So I put the link in there again. Check it out. We'd love to hear what y'all have to say about rank brain. If anybody wants to hop into the video here and chat with us, we'd, we'd love to see you out here um, and hear your thoughts on it. And I have people still telling me that um, John's having an audio an audio issue. Um, so hang on for one second because I think I know what his problem is. I'll be right back. Hey, isn't that cool? She showed up in my office. I was thinking, is this right here? That's not it, it looks like. Okay. No, that wasn't it. So, can you hear me now? <laughs> Maybe y'all can give us a report. Allie, can you hear him now? Is John's audio any better? Well, if Lisa will be quiet, I'll be able to be heard. <laughs> oh, well, we'll see how this works. Okay. So, so anyway, that's the discussion about rank brain. Um, now, one of the other things, and, and actually, I hope y'all can hear John because because he had this was his baby, and this is something he wrote about. You know, bluebell ice cream. Everybody loves their bluebell. Texas loves bluebell, right? Well, they've made a comeback. So, tell us, John, about um, the comeback. You wrote about it recently on Rocks Digital. Tell us uh, the comeback and what you, how do you think they did it? And and anybody that has any thoughts or comments in the chat about how they think Bluebell did it, please feel free to do so. So Bluebell had a really interesting situation uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with that. Uh, last Earlier this year, uh, literally springtime, uh, Bluebell had a, uh, a bacteria or something that was getting into the ice cream, which, you know, Texas and ice cream are, are big, big things. Uh, you know, I've even got a friend out in California that uh, is a bluebell nut and she can't get bluebell out there. And every time she comes to Texas, she always just, you know, bluebell with every meal. Uh, but uh, the situation they, that they were having is they literally were going to have to shut down their plants and clean everything up and go through and, and do all of this. Well, the problem is it was at the peak of their season. And Bluebell's situation is that you know, that's when they're they're making their most money is throughout the summer because you know summer and ice cream go together and and Texas and Bluebell go together. So in, in their situation, they had to deal with an ultimate crisis management situation to where they had to keep all of the their customers, their loyal fans of Bluebell ice cream engaged in realizing that hey bluebell is going to be back and so for them yeah they have potential customers overall so kind of an interesting uh case study to go out and look at what they were actually doing on facebook and twitter and things like that while they were going through and and Uh, really successful crisis management campaign that they were dealing with. That's it's very interesting. I was trying to see John if your volume, because because I'm not even able to hear you through my earbuds very well. So okay, let me check my assistant preferences real quick. Have you? Uh, maybe I have you. Uh, I'm just hearing you so well because you're actually sitting across from me. So did you lose John completely? I take it out. Okay, hang on for me one second, guys. I'm sorry we're having some technical difficulties. Um, I'll to give that summary uh, because it is so valuable for the reader. I mean, all of our listeners today and, and viewers can actually think about whenever they're going through those search results pages. You know, they're looking at what website it is, and if they think it's the website, the next thing they'll look at is truly the that meta description that's listed there. And I think, you know, it's also sad when you don't define that meta description is that it will just randomly pull up stuff off of the page. And I've literally seen it just hop all over the place on the page as you refresh that search result. So it's an extremely valuable thing for you. 
That that's great. I think John, I finally learned how to how to make you a host. Yay. Maybe I don't know. Is it working for you? Uh, yeah, you, it's been said that I've. Uh, now you're a host. Awesome. Okay. As y'all can see, we're still playing around. Oh, Byron just hopped in. Byron, are you going to hop in and join in some video and talk with us about uh, some of the things we're discussing? This what exotic place he's at <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Last time Byron joined us, he was in California. And actually, the topic that's up next would be a really good topic for Byron to talk about. Um, oh, yeah. So... So what's up next is the 10 best ways to follow up. And this was put out by uh, Patty Farmer. It was actually published on um, Rocks Digital this morning. I gave y'all a link if y'all want to look at it. But y'all don't even have to read the article because let's be honest, we all know that we should be following up with people and how we should do it effectively. The thing that I enjoyed about um, Patty's article was when you think of, of follow up, John, do you think of it as, hey, I'm going to follow up with somebody I just met as a networking event? I'm going to follow up with somebody that I just, you know, how do you think of follow up at a conference? How do, how do you think of it? And when do you think it's appropriate to do it? Well, I think that anytime you're, you're out meeting people, it's a really good idea to go ahead and follow up. Uh, you know, I regularly will, will mention whether I'm doing a LinkedIn presentation or something like that, that I always try to follow up with everybody that I meet. Uh, you know, so if I'm picking up a business card from somebody that I'm meeting at, you know, Rocks Digital or at one of the local meetups or something like that, I always try to follow up as my first initial step in LinkedIn, you know, because I want to add them to my professional network there on LinkedIn. Uh, and then I'll start expanding out from there and, you know, the, the blog post that we posted the link for is, is, has a great list there. And it's, you know, where else can you connect with them? Because uh, part of the thing that we're trying to do with this, this follow-up is to stay top of mind uh, of people that we're meeting so that, you know, if, if they're looking for something, whether it's social media, SEO, or even local search, uh, that we would stay top of mind because we have made that extra effort to go out and follow up with them. One of the things that I thought was really interesting about about what Patty had to say is, is follow up is this is this was my this was my takeaway, John, is follow up isn't just about meeting them at an event or at a conference, but follow up is any time. So say you meet somebody on social media, they shout out to you just on Twitter. You know, and they say, hey, great to meet you. Great tip. I loved I loved that tip or whatever it is. You know, that is also follow up. You can follow up with them on social media, but you can also take that conversation to another place. So you can follow up with them in an email. Ask them a question. Hey, I'd like to discuss that more with you. Drop me an email. Or you could take it to a video follow up. Now, that's actually something that uh, Byron um, wrote about um, on Rocks Digital, I think a couple of months ago, was about how to follow up with video. And he even talked about how you could target them with a Facebook ad, which I thought was a hoot. You know, you could chase them around um, <laughs> Facebook with a video and target them. I'm actually going to uh, get that link for you all to look at because it was some really other clever ways to follow up besides the one Patty discussed. One of the things Patty mentioned in her secret to following up that I thought was um, compelling was following up with them um, by going to their group or their Facebook page and actually having conversation with them in in that outlet, if that makes sense. Um, here is a, I'm gonna, here's a Byron's article about video follow up that I think is a, that I think is a who y'all might want to, let me get his Twitter ID in here for y'all. Um, you know, one of Patty's secrets and she didn't share this in the article. So this is like a, a secret message. I hope she doesn't, um, when she watches this recording, she doesn't go, Lisa, you shared my secret. But but one of the things that Patty, um, way she likes to follow up with people, and I've heard her do it, and I heard her talk to people about this, is ask people where what platform they like to use the best and follow up with them on that platform. Oh, that's a and, great idea. And because 
not everybody's on everybody's social on every social media site. Maybe they're on Facebook, but they really only use Facebook for personal, so they don't want to have business there. And they're on Twitter all the time. That's the right. best place to find them. So that's one of the things that I, you know, I think is clever about what Patty says about following up. And I'm trying to okay there. The second time I pasted the link went through. So Anyway, that's a little bit about follow up. We have six minutes left. So we're going to talk about some uh, other things that came out in search. And we don't actually have an article where we discussed it. But I do think it's something that's fun and cool. And they all should all test it out. And that is Instagram's boomerang. What do you think about that, John? Have you played with it yet? I haven't played with it yet, but I was reading about it earlier this week. And, you know, clearly it's going to, it's, I think it's going to be Instagram's competitor to Facebook video and Periscope, Miracap, and, and even Blab. Uh, it's their way to get into that video game that they're looking at. Uh, well, but it's only 31 seconds. I mean, how much can you say in 31 seconds? And I don't know that there's any audio with it. I've looked at it. I'm going to confess right now. I have not played with it. I've seen some of the videos. I can tell you right away, and this is what it reminded me of. So who out there is an iPhone, has an iPhone 6S, the newest, okay? So they have, uh, I can't remember the name. It's like Photos Live or something, okay? It's, it's built within the phone. So when you take a picture and you hit the live button, and it's like this video that just plays over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And it reminded me of a boomerang. And so I thought it was so funny when I first saw that video. And then I was looking at the Instagram boomerang thing. Um, there's so many video platforms and we're actually um, working on a content piece about this. You know, we're thinking about all the video platforms that have been around. Um, Mericat, I mean, Meerkat, Periscope, Facebook Live for mentions. Um, Vine, which is anybody using Vine anymore? You know, we have Vine. We have, um, I'm trying to think, what's the other one? So I have a whole list of them that's came out. Um, of course, then we have Google Plus Hangouts. Blab is, I mean, Blab is awesome. I mean, this has been my second Blab, and it's fun to blab, 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 blab. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist saying that. <laughs> Let's do some blabbing. I can't help it. I laugh when I think about it. Um, I'm enjoying Blab. Um, there's some of the cool bells and whistles that I'm trying to get integrated. Like John mentioned, we're trying to get the lower thirds. We haven't mastered that yet. We had some audio technology issues. So we're still figuring it out. But Blab is just growing like crazy. And it's so much fun. And it's a great way to interact with people. So I'm really enjoying that part of it. Oh, it looks like Erin just hopped into the Blab. Maybe she's going to come in into our seat with us, Erin. You going to hop in with us? We'd love to have you. Um, so I think that that's the thing about video. It's just, it's just crazy, you know, um, how much that things are changing. Hop in with us, Aaron. Tell us a little bit about some of your experience of Blab. Here's Aaron right here. Aaron had perfect timing. I know. I was just going to see what you guys are up to. And then I'm like, oh, okay, I'll come in. So we've been chatting about the things that have been happening um, this past week that we've written about things we've saw in search and we were just talking about Instagram as boomerang and then talking about all the other video platforms that have came out. Now, how long have you been blabbing now, Aaron? For a while. I've been on here for a while now. So at least, uh, three, four months now. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, uh, and you're loving it and it's getting great results for you, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I, it's just a great way. I use Periscope as like, an individual like hears me talking to a group and then I use blab for collaboration and I love it. Yeah, we're having we're having fun with it. And like I said, this is only the second one we did. And the last one, we, the first one we did was really just like spur of the moment. Like we're talking like six minutes beforehand. I yeah. just hopped in and said, hey, John, or I, I, John said, let's blab about YouTube Red. And then I called Byron and said, hey, let's do it. And you next thing you know, we're we're blabbing. I mean, it's it's that easy. It's so cool. Yeah, it's really awesome. I've actually moved a lot of my podcast recordings to Blab too. Oh yeah, and yeah. are you uploading your straight to YouTube? Uh, not all of them. I don't do all of them. If, if I, I actually need, I I need to hire somebody to help me because I've got like a ton of Blab. I don't want to do it directly because sometimes I like to kind of take clips. Like one time we did a podcast recording, and it ended up we just were having such great conversation. It was over two hours long. Uh, it was Friday. <laughs> I mean, we were just having fun. And so I don't want somebody to have to sit through the whole two hours on Blab. I want to be able to take certain port. Cause I mean, you watch it like when you change titles, 
You'll, right. you, even in an hour, we did one this morning. In that hour, there were three different title changes just because we chunked it. So bef- instead of just uh, doing the hour upload, I want to pull the chunks of what we talked about. And that way, you know exactly, okay, for these 10 minutes, we talked about this. This is the topic. And you can watch that video versus watching the whole thing to see how it changes. That. That totally, that totally makes sense. So we want, we, we've promised to keep our blabs to, to 30 minutes. And so that's why it's the lunch blab. And so we've got one minute left to cover um, two more topics and then we're going to wrap up, Aaron. But stay around because I want to hear, I want to ask you a question. Okay. So have you seen the new Facebook news feed? Have you gotten that coming up yet for you? I haven't gotten it yet. My sidebar <laughs> keeps disappearing. You, did you just say you loved it, John? No, I said lucky. Oh, uh, I was going to say, give me something to throw over you. <laughs> across from me. I'm going to throw something at him right now if he said that. Um, my sidebar keeps disappearing, and it's driving me crazy, Aaron, because I can't get to any pages I manage. I can't do anything. I'm lost. And and John, it's been driving him crazy all week. He's like, I wish they stopped testing that news feed because that's all he keeps hearing me gripe about. <laughs> yeah, no, I've... <laughs> I Have guess you I'm seen... Glad. Be glad, definitely. Um, Ali, Ali, which was on here, Al, Ali, I'm, I want to make sure I say it right, Ali. I, I'm going to say it wrong. He was on here earlier, and and I had posted on Facebook when it was happening, and it's happening to him too, and it's driving him crazy also. So the last thing I wanted to talk about, and then we're gonna we're gonna close off, is have you seen the new Facebook search feature, Aaron? No, I feel like I'm out of the Facebook world. I mean, I've been using, I don't know. I, well, I think it's all the same. I don't you know. might not even have noticed that yeah, it changed. that's what I'm wondering. Because what they've done is, so say you go to your smartphone, your iPhone or wherever, and you start searching for John Nozzle. Now it would say John Nozzle's photos, John Nozzle's post. So anything that is posted as public starts showing up as a recommendation and especially on um, the iPhone app. I've really noticed it. And so that's one of the things that they've changed. It's not that they've like changed the visual look of their search that you would notice it, but they have changed how it, the results it delivers for you. And I actually posted a link to an article about it um, that we actually published at the end of last week about Facebook search and how um, you really need to be optimizing your post with the keywords for search now, for local SEO even. So for example, if you have a brick and mortar uh, business, um, you need to include, you know, hey, having a special at our Dallas location, or maybe you're in a suburb, um, like, uh, I can't think of the name of it, but it's over there for Lowe Greenville. It has a, there's a suburb that they, you know, it has a name, I can't think of it right now, but it has a neighborhood name that people call it locally, you know, using that keyword in there. Um, Deep Ellum, the Bronx, those kind of things. And that way, when people are searching for keywords that relate to it, your posts are going to come up if you post them as public on your page, on your business page, or on your profile. So people need to be thinking about it. So check it out, Aaron, and see if you've noticed mine's, it. Mine's still the same. Of course, I don't have the app. So I don't, I'm like the Facebook conspiracy freak out person. So I don't have the actual app. I go through Safari to get my Facebook on my phone, but it's still the same for me. Well, so if you, so if you look at your, you know, like right here, I look for John Nozzle and I wish I, I don't, I'm going to figure out to do screen grabs in here. I know there's a screen sharing lab, but I search John Nozzle and it says John Nozzle photos, John Nozzle post, and then it shows John Nozzle's name. And so it would be the same thing if I wanted to search, um, best tacos does it on Facebook. Hold on. in Dallas. Yeah, and I'm in the browser and I searched best tacos in Dallas and it came up tacos in Dallas County. And then and when I search best tacos in Dallas, it shows me I have top latest people, photos, video, pages, places and more. And then if anybody else has talked about those keywords um, with like best or tacos or and you can, of course, use your limited search features in here and only get well, delivery. Everybody, yes. Well, and, and and maybe that's what it is because I just put the quotes around it, and now I'm seeing a post from uh, 2009, and then I see some public posts where people are talking about, you know, someone Monica fell from 2013. You just made the blab. She talked about uh, this guy named Jose who knows his tacos, and shared a link to something that was in D Magazine. I mean, so 
And that's just one search. I picked something kind of specific. But anyway, test it out. Play with the new search feature. See what you get. I think it's going to be really important for businesses and page owners to start thinking about keywords, not just to get people to click them, not clickbait, but, but search bait. Yeah. So with that said, um, thanks for joining us, Aaron. This has been thanks the uh, Rocks Digital Lunch Lab. And uh, we'll be back next Friday at noon. Make sure and uh, share it with your friends. And thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Oh, that's right. John has his fountain pen shirt on. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Have a great day. Figure out how to turn it off.